Hello, welcome to BioGrid TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of El Haj Omar Bongo Odimba. Small in size, but possess a big influence on the political scene. He is popularly referred to as the Africa's little big man. Today, we unravel the life of the fourth youngest president in Africa and unarguably the youngest president of Gabon, who became president in 1967 at the age of 31. He also receives the record as the longest serving head of state in Africa and the world at large from 1967 until he died in 2009. Born on the 30th of December 1935, Lewai, Gabon, formerly known as French Equatorial Africa, Omar Bongo was the youngest child of 12 siblings. Here's a man who had a dramatic twist of names as he grew older. From the beginning, he was christened Albert Bernard Bongo, but in 1973, he converted to Islam and renamed himself El Haj Omar Bongo, while he added Ondimba in 2003 in recognition of his father, Basile Ondimba, who was from Bakete ethnic group. Bongo had his formal education in Brazzaville, now Congo. Soon after completing his primary and secondary education in Brazzaville, Bongo began a job at the Post and Telecommunications Public Services before joining the French military where he served as a second lieutenant, later as a first lieutenant in the Air Force, successively in Brazzaville, Bangui and Fort Lamy, that is the present-day N'Djamena in Chad, before being honorably discharged as captain. After his successive spell in the Air Force between 1958 to 1961 came to an end, Bongo returned to Gabon a year after independence. Being a man of the moment, Bongo had several affairs with women. Some will even call him the Casanova president. Hmm. But notably, he first got married to Louis Moyabi Mukala in 1957, a marriage that was dissolved in 1979. He later married Patience Dabani in 1959, but divorced in 1987 and then settled in with Edith Lucy Bongo from 1989 till death took her away on the 14th of March 2008 after her 45th birthday. Interestingly, it's on record that Bongo has more than 30 children from different women. What a feat! El Haj Omar Bongo Ondimba began to serve in the government from 1962 when he was appointed to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and later became Assistant Director of the Presidential Cabinet in March and was thereon promoted to become Director in October 1962. Bongo survived the abortive coup that occurred in 1964. Then, in September 1965, after power was returned to President Leon Mba, Bongo became a man of many portfolios, occupying numerous positions as he was appointed presidential representative and was in charge of defense and coordination. In 1966, he became the vice president of Gabon and appointed minister of information and tourism in 1967. Slowly and steadily, Bongo became interim president in February 1967 when President Leon Mba fell sick, an unfortunate sickness that led him to his grave in November 1967. However, the downfall of Leon Mba led to the rise of the longest serving president of Gabon, El Haj Omar Bongo, who began his reign at 31 years of age. During his regime, he took the path of his predecessor, Leon Mba, keeping a good relationship with France, both economic and political ties, which gave France the opportunity to own a petroleum company, Elf Aquitaine and Oil Drilling, right in Gabon till date. He also maintained a relative stability in Gabon, despite periodic accusations of corruption, money laundering, election rigging and intimidation of political opponents. Bongo had initially stated that, 
Gabon without France is like a car with no driver. France without Gabon is like a car with no fuel. In March 1968, he decreed Gabon to be a one-party state as he successfully changed and reformed the Gabonese Independence Party to Gabonese Democratic Party PDG. During the 1973 general elections, Bongo contested for the presidency unopposed, making he and his party candidates accumulate a landslide victory of 99.56% of the votes cast. In April 1975, Bongo decided to abolish the office of vice president and appointed the former vice, Leon Mibiame, as prime minister, a position Bongo held concurrently alongside being president since 1967. He operated a single-party system with the established Gabonese Democratic Party PDG, until 1990, when Bongo was forced to introduce a new constitution and multi-party elections. Tensions and destructive protests began to take turns after Joseph Renjambe, a prominent leader in the country, was assassinated. However, Bongo was able to counter any form of rebellion in the country with the help of the French military. His respective parliamentary majorities increased and the opposition became more subdued with each election. Despite the heavy criticisms Bongo received in running an ineffective government, Accused of working for himself, his family and local elites and not for Gabonese populace. Yet, he championed the political terrain of Gabon for more than four consecutive decades. El Haj Omar Bongo Odimba is believed to be one of the richest men in the world during his lifetime, with foreign bank accounts allegedly totaling $130 million and real estate investment in France worth about $190 million. Much of his wealth, however thought to have been looted from state oil revenue, was reportedly used to calm and appease political opponents throughout his stay in office. He died on the 8th of June 2009 in Barcelona, Spain. Prior to his death in 2009, Bongo had spent a larger part of the year in a major row with France over the French inquiry. It was reported that the French court's decision in February 2009 to freeze his bank account shook him to fall like a pack of cards. At first, his government had initially accused France of waging a campaign to destabilize the country. Allegedly, it was for that reason that he was hospitalized and spent his last days in Spain and not in his favorite abode in France. His son, Ali Bongo Ondimba took over from him as president after winning the 2009 presidential election. What have we missed out of this biography of Omar Bongo? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.